We used to look up in the sky and wonder at our place in the stars. Now we just look down and worry about our place in the dirt. In 2014, my friends and I entered the AMC theater, excited to watch a movie that had garnered our interest for some time. All of us left the nearly three hour long film, satisfied, and discussed our opinions on some major scenes. My father even bought me a disc, which I watched two more times, including the behind the scenes. About seven years later, I revisited one of my favorite films with a renewed curiosity over the genesis, story meaning, and music of Christopher Nolan's work, Interstellar. Producer Linda Opst and theoretical physicist Kip Thorne created the premise for Interstellar. This caught the interest of filmmaker Steven Spielberg, and development with Paramount Pictures began in June 2006. The famous director hired Jonathan Nolan to write the screenplay in March 2007. About two years later, Spielberg moved from DreamWorks to Walt Disney Studios. With the director missing, Jonathan recommended his brother, Christopher, who joined the production in 2012. In January the next year, Paramount and Warner Brothers announced Christopher Nolan's position to supervise Interstellar. The new director would visit NASA and SpaceX to research for the film. Jonathan worked on the script for four years, during this time, he studied relativity at the California Institute of Technology to learn the scientific aspects. His brother kept the idea of a resource-depleted Earth in the near future, favoring the setting inspired by the Dust Bowl during the Great Depression. Christopher even contacted director Ken Burns and producer Dayton Duncan to use their interviews from the 2012 documentary The Dust Bowl, which the two allowed. Now, actors were needed. After seeing the 2012 film Mud, Christopher sought Matthew McConaughey, the director also reached out to Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain, and Irvin Kahn to star in the film. Since Kahn faced conflicting schedules, Matt Damon took his place. After production ended, the major actors of Interstellar held mostly positive opinions over their involvement in the film. Jessica Chastain and Casey Affleck appreciated the relaxed atmosphere of Nolan's set, commending the director's expertise and cooperation. Emma Thomas and Matthew McConaughey enjoyed their time with Kip Thorne and learning from the physicist's grounded teachings. Thomas further adds her inspiring interactions with U.S. astronaut Marsha Ivins, who visited the set to provide consulting. Anne Hathaway, citing her previous experience with Nolan in the 2012 film The Dark Knight Rises, admired his respect for her process on getting into character. Less positive came from Timothée Chalamet, who admitted feeling disappointed in his minor role but holds no hard feelings against his dream director. Audio engineers included Greg Landaker and Gary Rizzo, alongside sound editor Richard King. In the film, Nolan purposefully used ambient noise or music with theater equipment to overpower dialogue, which caused theaters to explicitly state that their speakers function normally. He also hired the renowned composer Hans Zimmer, whom he had worked with throughout his many films. The two chose a 1926 four manual Harrison and Harrison organ as the main instrument for the soundtrack. Organ soloist Roger Sayer would play the musical Behemoth for the movie. Nolan knew the organ represented mankind's connection with religion, but more importantly, the things out of humanity's reach, fitting for a space venturing film. Zimmer created 45 scoring sessions for the film, and the score was released on November 18th, 2014. When Nolan first approached the composer on the soundtrack, he decided not to tell Zimmer any story details for the film's music, but instead gave him a single page that told the story of a father leaving his child for work. Interstellar, on its surface, depicts a space journey to save humanity. Beneath that surface, however, the film somewhat explores the idea of love. Dr. Amelia Brand, when deciding between two planets due to a lack of fuel, admits her slight bias towards Wolf Edmund's planet because of her love for him. Joseph Cooper, after falling into the black hole, is able to communicate with his daughter Murphy through the Tesseract because of his fatherly love for her. Dr. Hugh Mann, devoid of warmth after being isolated for 30 years on his icy planet, falls to cowardice and tries to reach Edmund's planet at the expense of Cooper, Brand, Tars, and Romilly. These scenes feel like authentic and believable interactions that people would probably do in real life, despite the fictional context for the film. The movie implicitly states that ideally selfless causes inevitably involve selfishness due to our imperfect nature. 
Interstellar is a successful science fiction film for its approach on the nature of good-intentioned individuals in extreme situations. It asks what we would do when the cradle of humanity can no longer sustain us and presents possible outcomes and interactions. Whether this film accurately predicts the future is uncertain for now, but it warns us what would happen if we do not stop our problems in the first place.